Okay, this definitely falls into the category of, here we go again. What am I talking about? Rather than tell you, let me show you. Just a few months ago, most of us had probably never even heard the word coronavirus. The spread of this disease is distressing, to be sure. But we're really not uh, surprised to see the world in the grip of such pestilence, are we? Jesus made it clear at Luke 21, 11, that pestilence would be part of the sign of the last days. And in Revelation chapter 6, the ride of the fourth horseman includes mention of deadly plague. So the events unfolding around us are making clearer than ever that we're living in the final part of the last days, undoubtedly the final part of the final part of the last days, shortly before the last day of the last days. This excerpt is from a recent video on JW.org. And you can see from it probably what I mean by, here we go again. What I mean is that we have heard this song before. We heard it a hundred years ago. We heard it 50 years ago. The song is always the same. A hundred years ago, the world was at war and millions had been killed. It seemed like the end had come. Because of the devastation the war caused, there were also famines in many places. Then, in 1919, a year after the war ended, a plague broke, broke out called the Spanish Influenza, and more died in the plague than were killed in the war. Taking advantage of these catastrophic events were men like J.F. Rutherford, who predicted the end would come in 1925. It seems like there is a 50-year cycle to this madness. From 1925, we move to 1975. And now, as we approach 2025, we have Stephen Lett telling us that we are in undoubtedly the final part of the final part of the last days, shortly before the last day of the last days. When the disciples asked Jesus for a sign to forewarn them of when the end would come, what were the first words out of his mouth? Look out that nobody misleads you. Jesus knew that fear and uncertainty about the future would make us easy targets for shysters looking to take advantage of us for their own benefit. So the first thing he told us was to look out that nobody misleads you. But how could we avoid being misled? By listening to Jesus and not to men. So after giving us this warning, Jesus goes into detail. He starts by telling us that there would be wars, food shortages, earthquakes, and according to Luke's account at Luke 21, 10 and 11, pestilences. However, he says not to be alarmed because these things are just going to happen. But to quote him, the end is not yet. He then adds, all these things are the beginning of pangs of distress. So Jesus says that when we see an earthquake or pestilence or food shortage or a war, that we are not to go running around crying, the end is near, the end is near. In fact, he tells us that when we see these things, we will know that the end is not yet, is not near, and that these are the beginning of pangs of distress. If pestilences like the coronavirus are the beginning of pangs of distress, how can Stephen Lett claim that they signal we are in the final part of the final part of the last days? Either we accept what Jesus tells us, or we disregard Jesus' words in favor of those from Stephen Lett. Here we have Jesus Christ on the right hand and Stephen Lett on the left hand. Which one would you rather obey? Which one would you rather believe? The final part of the last days is essentially the last days of the last days. That would mean that Stephen Lett is trying very hard to sell us on the idea that not only are we in the last days of the last days, but we are in the last days of the last days of the last days. 
Okay. Our Lord, in his wisdom, knew that such a warning would not be enough. That is the warning he gave us already. He knew that we are far too susceptible to panic and willing to follow any liar who claims to have the answer, so he gave us even more to go on. After telling us that even he didn't know when he would be coming back, he gives us the comparison to the days of Noah. He says that in those days they were oblivious until the flood came and swept them all away. Matthew 24, 39, uh, Marine Study Bible. And then, just to make sure that we don't assume he's talking about people who are not his disciples, that his disciples will not be oblivious, but will be able to discern that he what he's that he's about to come, he tells us. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day on which your Lord will come. Matthew twenty four forty two. You would think that would be enough, but Jesus knew better. And so, two verses later, he says that he is coming when we least expect it. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Matthew twenty four forty four. NIV Bible. It sure sounds like the governing body is expecting him to come. So the events unfolding around us are making clearer than ever that we're living in the final part of the last days, undoubtedly the final part of the final part of the last days, shortly before the last day of the last days. For well over 100 years, the leaders of the organization have been looking for signs and getting everybody all excited because of things they saw as signs. Is this a good thing? Is this just the result of human imperfection, well intention bumbling? Jesus said this about those who are constantly looking for signs. A wicked and adulterous generation keeps seeking a sign but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah the prophet, Matthew 12, 39. What would qualify a modern generation of Christians as adulterous? Well, anointed Christians are part of the Bride of Christ. So a 10-year affair with the image of the wild beast of Revelation, which witnesses claim represents the United Nations, would certainly qualify as adultery. And wouldn't it be wicked to get people to ignore the warnings of the Christ by trying to get them to believe in signs that don't really mean anything? One has to wonder about the motivation behind such a thing. If all Jehovah's Witnesses think that the governing body has some special insight into current events, some means to predict how close the end is and provide life-saving information when the time comes, then they are more likely to blindly be obedient to everything that the organization, that the governing body tells them to do. Is that what they are trying to accomplish? As for the rest of us, whether the direction we receive comes from the governing body, the branch, our circuit overseer, or the elders, we want to follow that direction closely. It can serve as a protection now. And really, if we think about it, it's good practice as we head into even more turbulent times ahead. But given the fact that they have done this many times before, and that each time they have failed, and given the fact that right now they are telling us that the coronavirus is a sign that we are close to the end, when Jesus very specifically tells us the opposite, well, does that not make them false prophets? Are they trying to exploit the panic of the moment to their own ends? That is, after all, what a false prophet does. The Bible tells us, When the prophet speaks in the name of Jehovah and the word is not fulfilled, or does not come true, then Jehovah did not speak that word. The prophet spoke it presumptuously. You should not fear him. Deuteronomy 18.22 What does it mean when it says, you should not fear him? It means we should not believe him, 
because if we believe him, then we will, we will be afraid to ignore his warnings. Fear of suffering the outcome of his predictions will cause us to follow him and obey him. That is the ultimate purpose of the false prophet, to get people to follow and obey him. So what do you think? Is Stephen Lett, speaking on behalf of the governing body, acting presumptuously? Should we fear him? Should we fear them? Or rather, should we fear the Christ, who has never let us down and never steered us down the wrong path, even once? If you think this information will benefit friends and family in the organization or elsewhere, please feel free to share it on social media. If you'd like to be informed of upcoming videos and live streaming events, be sure to subscribe. It costs us money to do this work, so if you'd like to help out with a voluntary donation, I'll put a link in the description of this video, or you can navigate to bereans.net where there is also a donation feature. Thank you very much for watching.